He ain't your daddy. He's your daffy. Hello, daffy Freyer. Hello, William. Hello, <laughs> Evie Blocks. You know, it's so nice to finally meet you digitally. The pandemic you messed too. up last year, but here you are looking very well. Where are you? I am in Iceland in the countryside um, at my wife's parents' place. Ah, is this where you so wrote some there. of your song? Um, yeah, I finished it up uh, here. Okay. I wrote most of it in Berlin, but I, I finished uh, the recording here. So you're very much at ease with the in-laws. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we, I went with, with her dad and, and family yesterday, uh, volcano watching, hiking oh, yeah. in, in the mountain and watching a volcano. We've been watching the news. Are you far from the erupting volcano? It's like an hour drive and then a one and a half hour walk. I love how calm Icelanders are. You're like, yeah, whatever. It's just an erupting volcano. <laughs> yeah. <that's good. laughs> but look, you've had so much to do in recent months, you know, music, videos, um, practice, choreography. Where are you at in the process? Have you done your live on tape? Uh, yeah, we did the live on tape last week. So we have we've built the new instruments and then the, and the new uh, costumes are, are ready. So we are... F fairly ready for Rotterdam at this point. I love how it sounds like a construction job. You know, you've built new instruments and new costumes. Does this mean yeah. your performance is different from what we saw on Icelandic TV the first time? Uh, yeah, the, the only thing that's the same is the dance from the, from the chorus and from the music video. Okay. Now, is this because... And the song. Right. Did you have this idea all along to kind of have different versions? Um, yeah, I knew that we didn't want to like reveal our stage performance right away. We want that to be like a moment on the stage. And also it's the, the song is, is written um, kind of three ways. One that where it works that you just listen to it. One where it works within the music video, which I had in mind already before I started writing the song. And then also uh, I had this stage in Rotterdam in mind. So like, yeah, we, we wanna, it's made for that stage. So I really hope that we get to go to Rotterdam. And we all hope that happens, but if it doesn't, do you think the live on tape performance kind of captures the spirit of your song and would you be happy with it? Um, I wouldn't be happy with it because like the point is to go to Eurovision and and actually experience like the whole thing it will be very anticlimactic for for the end of Gagnamagne to then just have to sit in Iceland and watch TV while we're competing in Eurovision so yeah no I wouldn't be happy I'm happy with our performance but but I really wish that we can uh, go to Rotterdam and, and do this for real Absolutely. And I'm hoping we can rewind a little bit, just because after the cancellation of Eurovision, many artists discussed how they were let down and, you know, they did all this work. But you, as sort of the favorite, certainly Icelanders had crowned you the winner. What was it like for you um, experiencing that cancellation? Um, it was mostly like I had already gotten way more out of the song that I, than I thought I would, even if we would have competed, like if we would have actually gone to Rotterdam. So for the, the sake of the song, I wasn't uh, too sad about it. It's mostly just Kakna Magnet. Like we made this band to um, band, like performance group to, to um, go to Eurovision in 2017. And we're in second place, which was way more than we thought. And then, this year we, we no, the last year we tried again and, and got through and we're super excited to actually go to Eurovision and yeah that's the, the main part is just actually going to Eurovision. I want to try and experience that even though this year it's going to be different because of some restrictions but but still I, I hope that we'll we'll be able to yeah get that uh, Eurovision vibe. And is part of the reason you've gone to your in-laws in the countryside to maybe avoid the fame of being recognized by everyone in Reykjavik? Well, we just we live in Berlin most of the time, and now we're in Iceland, so it's uh, it's a place to be. <laughs> okay, gotcha. But uh, yeah, it's 
COVID has has made it so I don't feel that that much, except for yesterday when I went volcano watching. I, I did some uh, social distance uh, selfies. <laughs> and 10 years, your song for Eurovision 2021, we read that you started working back in September. How long was the process from I've got this idea to the final product? Um, I I knew before I started writing the song what the what the video was going to be and some key elements of the of the stage performance, and then I just started making beats and seeing if something would stick. And I I named them like there were various degrees of finish. Some of them were like almost starting to sound like songs, and some of them were just a, a drum a beat and a bass line or something. But I, I think it was number twelve. Like Eurovision, maybe number twelve, which was the one that that stuck. Dirty dozen. <laughs> will we get to hear the previous versions, or maybe will they go on an album later as something else? Uh, some of it is going to be part of the video game that we're releasing um, at the end of this month or end of next month. Let's do this. Uh, Dal and Kakna Magnit think about aliens. <sighs> Will this be available on iOS and Android, like an app? Yes, it will. Oh, can you tell us the plot of the game? Um, not really. It's uh, you, you can see a glimpse of it in the new music video. Like Yowie from from Gretna Magna, he's taking care of the video game and, and he's playing it for like a, a second in the video. You know, in the yeah, music video. Okay, this is all making a lot of sense now. We'll come to the video later, but I get that video but, game vibe. It happens in between the Think About Things video and the, the 10 years music video. Ah, okay. I can gotcha. say that much. <laughs> and your wife, of course, the song is about your lovely wife and your relationship together. When you approached her with this idea, was she like a little creeped out? I mean, what, what was her reaction? Um, yeah, she wasn't like, <laughs> she, I, I wouldn't say that she was creeped out, but she uh, had to think about it a little bit it wasn't an immediate like yes let's do that because mm. like she's she's part of the performance so so it, it may uh, yeah the, the first thought is probably like it, it would be a little weird to be on stage dancing to a song that's like talking about how fascinating i am it's funny someone asked um one of our bloggers says What's it like for Arnie on stage? You know, she's dancing as a band member. But the song is about her in Rotterdam. Will she play herself and be like, it's about me? She'll be uh, part of the band. We're, uh, we're a team. Oh, okay. So it's, uh, yeah, the, the song, the ly lyrics are, are one thing, but the, the performance is another thing. Got it. Now in the music video, Super cool. You're saving Reykjavik from, I guess, a, a big monster, ostrich, chicken type thing. Um, what's the basic premise here and how does it relate to the meaning of the song? Um, the meaning of the song with like the lyrics doesn't really have much to do with the story of the, uh, of the music video, but maybe more the the approach of making it and stuff like that, like the costumes, the monster costumes and the, and the uh, robot me and my wife made together. Like we, we built most of the stuff that like the instruments also and, and stuff like that for that. So we, we worked together a lot on our stuff and, and the, this was very collaborative with the, with the making of the, the costumes for this. So yeah, maybe that has more to do with the actual lyrics of the song, but otherwise it's just um, a, a vibe uh, I wanted to create. And so did you create the little house that the monster destroys? Oh, that was uh, that was uh, Ulver, uh, a, a guy that uh, works in the props department at Roof. Oh, very cool. We got, we, we got to, because we were competing in Eurovision, we, we got to... <laughs> I go to their green screen studio and and borrow some props people from from Roof for our video. <laughs> it it looks quite cool and the people in the video, you know, the actor playing the mayor, um, some of the woman baking a pie. Did you know these people or are these uh, actors that you didn't know? Um, 
Ola Otari, the, the, the guy in the beginning, the, the mayor of Iceland, he is um, probably the most famous Icelandic actor right now, I think. He was in the Eurovision movie also, so that's... Uh, um, but, and I, I had met him a few times before because I've worked as a, as a boom operator uh, for, for Icelandic TV and, and film. And the other actors, I didn't know um, until the Think About Things video because they, they are returning actors. So I, I didn't know them before that, but I knew them before 10 years. Got it. You have that sense of trust, connection. Welcome back to the fold. <laughs> yeah, it's also the same uh, director and director of uh, photography from Think About Things. Ah, now if, the... if you become part of the, the, the Gagna Magna team, then you're in it. <laughs> so the choreography is very unique. This is very, very different. You know, last year you had unique choreography and this year you've kept quirkiness, but it's still different. To me, it's like, I don't know, a fish standing upright and like moving its fins in a way. Um, where did you get the idea for this? And does it represent anything? Um, the, the main idea, honestly, from um, the Think About Things video, at least, was um, Skibbity by Little Big, which was pretty crazy when they, we then saw that they were going to compete as well like that's the main inspiration to the to the dance moves there and then the main inspiration to the dance moves this year is the think about things video we wanted to continue the Gagna magnet thing ah it's sort of an interesting cycle so how does Daphne and Iceland discover a little big was that before Eurovision yeah like uh, I I think I, I saw them first when me and a friend of mine were just going through artists that started with little. We just thought it was funny that how many artists started with little and then we found little big and thought it was hilarious and went to watch it and then uh, they blew my mind. One thing that fans have said is sort of when you, and this is something I've noticed, when I first heard the song this year and last year, I was like, that's good. But then when I see the visuals, like the music video this year, it becomes something bigger for me. I don't know why. And the lyrics, as you say, aren't necessarily even related to the visuals, but it takes it to the next level. Did you ever think about revealing the song with the official music video instead of on the TV show? Um, yeah, it was just, it, it wasn't ready. Like we, we knew that we wouldn't have it ready for, for that time and we needed to because of uh, Eurovision rules, we needed to have it out at a certain point. I see. So yeah, it, it would probably have made more sense to to have it both out because uh, the the video was was in my mind the whole time I was I was writing the song. But mm. but I think it still works. The video is epic, and you mentioned to Eurovision that Power Rangers and Paw Patrol both kind of influenced it. Is your daughter watching Paw Patrol? Was that part of yes. ah. <laughs> it's it's weird how some things just really stick with with kids. Also, let it go. Like that's uh, I, I understand Paw Patrol, but let it go, like the frozen thing, because it's it's like a dramatic uh, um, song and and like just one character dancing in like a blue, like kind of cold environment, but all kids just love it. Now, your Paw young Patrol one, is the same. <laughs> how old is your daughter? She's almost two. Ah, okay. So when she sees you and your wife or Gagna Magnet in a computer, a tablet, a screen, does she know it's you? Yeah. She also knows the, the pixelated face if she see, sees that. Like there's a there's a Icelandic TV show that has like a collage of images before, like in the intro. And one of those is my pixelated face. And every time she sees it, she's like, she knows it right away. That's remarkable, isn't it? Two years old. Mm -hmm. She's a genius. <laughs> hey, maybe she will write your next song. Who knows? Keeping it in the family. Um, and last year, there were all these weird conspiracy theories online. It was all very strange about celebrities being paid by the dark forces of Netflix. What were you thinking when all of that was going on? Um, like... When I first saw it, it was like my, my first reaction was uh, it was a little annoying because <laughs> it, it felt like um, we couldn't have um, made made it be become 
like people couldn't like it unless Netflix was somehow behind it. Mm. But then very, very soon it just became funny to me and then just became like a nice promotional <laughs> thing. Like it, it just got us more press. Yeah, and it's interesting because here in the UK, foreign Eurovision acts, so not the British act, don't always get much attention, but you were everywhere. It's like, you're on radio too. You're on radio. Yeah. It was this amazing moment. And yeah, um, did you expect that? Because the, the song, what I'm trying to say, the song now when I hear it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's obviously a hit. But you as creator, when you created it, were you like, yeah, that's a hit? Uh, no. I I felt like it was uh, good. I really liked the song, but I I don't really know what a what makes a hit. Like I can't really tell you when I hear a song. Like okay, that's gonna become super popular. I just know what I like, and mm. yeah, that's what and, I release. And that sets a huge expectation, a huge bar. So you're working on ten years. Was that a challenge or was it more like an opportunity because you knew what you had kind of worked? I felt like, yeah, it was more of an opportunity. Like I, um, with Tadeo uh, Gagna Magnet, our, our Eurovision performance group, we, we have like a, a certain, bo- both uh, audio and visual like aesthetic that, I, that I'm working within and I, I like working like that where I have like some restrictions so it's both like it has to fit um, Eurovision but it also has to fit Tade or Gagna Magnet so it's like yeah, it was it was just fun fun to make basically and we read that this is Gagna Magnet's last collaboration most likely could you tell us about this decision and if you are sad about it um, Gagna Magnet was always to, supposed to be a one-time thing in, in 2017, but then it just grew into something much bigger than we had anticipated. Um, I, I don't think it's the last thing that we do together. It's, it's most definitely the last time that um, we like release a song together because we're a, we're a Eurovision thing. But I think we're we're going to try to at least once uh, experience Eurovision non with with no COVID. So then we want to make like our own Tadeo uh, Kagna party somewhere where Eurovision is being held. So we uh, Eurovision cover songs and, and just general good time. Ah, okay, brilliant. And we saw um, English subtitles on the RUV documentary about your life and how the band came together. And one mm-hmm. funny part for me was, I, I think it was Stefan, Johan, and you are discussing um, how the, cr- the criteria to join the group <laughs> and how you chose people. Could you tell us about that? Um, I don't remember exactly how it was with Joey. I think when I had decided, because I wasn't going to sing the first song in 2017, um, I was going to get somebody else to sing it, but then in the end, it, like that didn't work out. So. So I decided to do it myself. And I think um, Yoi got in on it just because we were like we were having a conversation on Messenger while I decided to compete. So we were like <laughs> brainstorming what we should do. And I think that's how he came into it. And then Hulda is one of the best singers I know. So that's how she came into it. And my sister is also one of the best singers that I know. So that's how she came into it. My wife is one of my favorite people. So that's how she came into it. And Stefan might be the funniest guy I know. So yeah, it's just, um, if you're best people, then you you were invited to the group. <laughs> that works. <laughs> I'm sure there are more than five others who want to be in it, but you had to make decisions. You chose one. Yeah, I just want like because uh, my my I have two sisters and my older sister was very pregnant um, in 2017 while we were uh, gonna compete, so um, that's why she's not in it. She's also a, an amazing singer and she sings on uh, backing vocals in the uh, studio recordings. Gotcha. Now, 
looking to Rotterdam, because it's getting very close, can you tell us anything about your staging besides it will be different to what we've seen? Um, not, not a lot. I can tell you there's new instruments and new, new costumes. Ooh. And we're trying to use the stage. And the construction of instruments, I find this interesting. How much work goes in, for instance, the first TV performance, you had the sparkling guitars, I guess. Um, how much time goes into creating each of these? Uh, those were the same that we used uh, last year. So I can't remember exactly how long it took, like two weeks, maybe from when we started until we were finished, but we were doing a bunch of other stuff in between. And I remember we, we did a, um, like making off the instruments for that video. And the, the last scene is me um, recording my watch and it's like 12 30 the day before we were going to use them on stage oh wow so we like just finished them and are you approaching this eurovision differently from last year because last year you release you're suddenly the favorite boom this year you're coming back you know like i'm death of Freya. <laughs> and does it change the way you look at the contest um um I'm definitely approaching this contest uh, very differently, but I think the main reason is that uh, we know that we are competing in Eurovision right away. So I wasn't um, writing for Sönka Kapnin as well. So we could just like focus on, on Eurovision straight away. So I can have some, uh, like I still have a lot of promo stuff that's that's still to come out, which would probably have already been out if we would have competed in Sönka Kapnin. Mm. So, Got Yeah, it's mostly that. The best is yet to come. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> and speaking of that, you've now written a song about your daughter, about your wife. Who is the next family member to get the Daffy treatment? I think I'm just going to write something about myself. Oh. How do I feel about me? Yes, a confessional. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Tingles. <laughs> And oh, I, I've already written the next one, and, and it's, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's it's another one from me to to Arnie, basically, but a very different uh, approach. Is there an album coming then? Because you've got new songs. Next year, there's an album coming, but I don't have any songs from that album yet. I want to structure it first, and and then like make it work as a whole. Okay. You, it sounds like you're very cerebral, like you're planning, do you know what I mean? Like methodical and careful. Is that a fair description? Yeah, I think so. So what's... I, if, I, if I release an album, I want it to be an album and not just like a collection of songs. So yeah. I want to have like a clear um, direction from uh, before I start writing anything. Do you have a 10 year plan? No, I have a two-year plan. And where are you in two years? Um, uh, hopefully my, my album is, is very much out and I'm uh, touring a, a lot of the places that I should have been touring. No. Right. We knew so many people who bought tickets. Glasgow, you're going all over the place. Yeah. But, but... hopefully in November, like that's, we rescheduled to November and we're we're planning for 2022. And this is a question from one of our Icelandic blog mates. She says, what will you do if you win Eurovision 2021? Um, I'm, I don't really have plans for <laughs> what I do if I, if I win. I have plans for what I do if I don't. And yeah, I'm not planning on, on winning. And her follow-up made me laugh. She says, is he ready for the emotional turmoil of the Icelandic nation, regardless of the outcome? Probably not. I don't know. I've never competed for real. I've only, like, yeah, went or won in Iceland, and then everybody in Iceland says that we would have won. So, like, I, I haven't experienced the, the, real, the real Eurovision. You stand out in the sea of songs sonically. It's completely different. 
to everything else. I'm curious though, of the other songs, what genre, which artist, which music interests you the most? Um, the, f- the first that I, or the one that I listen to the most definitely is uh, Go A, the U- Ukrainian song. But I'm also a, a big fan of uh, Montaigne. I like her. I've, I've also listened to her, her like non Eurovision music. And then John's Tears. I really like him as well. And The Roop. Like I'm, I'm a fan of a lot of the, the music from, from this year. Yeah, as I was to say, he likes Ukrainian folk. He likes hyperpop Australia. He likes <laughs> open-minded. Well, look, Daffy, we are wishing you so much luck. It is so exciting to see what you and the whole gang do. Um, we can't wait to see your stage show in Rotterdam. Do you have a final message for all of your fans out there reading or watching on weebyblogs.com? Um, yes, I do. Hi, Vivi Blocks. Love you. Oh, <laughs> short and to the point. Daffy Freyer is in the semifinals. If you want him in the final, you need to vote. Gagna Magna, 10 years. Thank you so much. Thank you. 